Welcome. Uh, my name is Christine Herzog. I'm the Managing Director of the Smart Grid Library and SGL Partners. And I am here today with Daryl Raleigh. He is the Executive Vice President of Sales for Ventix, an ABB company. And as well, uh, Peter Ziegenstam. He is the VP and Head of EON's Distribution Innovation Center. So welcome, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you here today for our conversation. Thank you. Great to be here. Well, let's, uh, let's start off by talking a little bit about uh, a topic that's near and dear to your hearts, and that is big data. And I'd really like to first and foremost get a sense of how do you define big data? What does that mean to you and, and to a utility? Well, what it means to us in Ventix, an ABB company is a software company, what it means to us is, you know, today with all the sensors and, and analog to digital devices that are on equipment, uh, dealing with customers of a utility, the operations of a utility, the amount of data is, is tenfold what it was ten years ago. So uh, a piece of equipment might have a sensor on it and it's capturing a piece of information every six, eight seconds, every hour, every day, every week, every month. And so you, you, the amount of data that's collected around the world that's able to be analyzed and used to make better decisions, it's just, it's just so much bigger than it was in the past. Peter, what, uh, what is your uh, definition? Is it the same or do you see it a little differently as a, uh, representing a utility? No, I think I agree here, but uh, also from a utility perspective, we have already a lot of data, but it sits in different data silos. And what big data really is providing us is that we are able to connect the data which are in different data silos and we are able to then optimize and, and use that data in another way. I think that is a sort of a complementing picture in here that we are then able to bring the data into one platform and that is the, where we are enabling ourselves to make new optimizations what we have not been able to be doing before. There's sometimes uh, big data is also described in terms of the four V's of uh, volume, variety, velocity, and veracity. Uh, do you find that those things are, are uh, important as considerations in terms of how you are managing, handling, accumulating, and, and working with uh, big data? Well, I think it, it is very true. And what we find today, to Peter's point, is there's plenty of, of data out there, but it's in silos, and it's very difficult to, because of the volume, the one V you mentioned, it's very difficult to make real-time decisions on it. Um, many companies are great at analyzing this data and making a decision three months later based on data that's three months old, but to make a decision in the next five or 10 or 15 minutes based on information that we just received is very difficult. That's because of the silos we talked about and the volume of data, uh, the sheer volume of data collected today. I think it's uh, also with the new technologies that we get in place, we, we definitely see velocity as well. Uh, you are able to start to do things in real time now uh, with um, in-memory technologies, etc. in here, which is uh, opening a new world actually to come into the in real time zone, but also by that starting to become proactive in, in operations, what you're doing as well. So. Um, I agree with, with that kind of a definition as well. Well, yes, and, and we often hear about breaking down the silos, um, and and it's almost kind of like a, a, a truism within utilities as well as with other businesses. Now, I have, yesterday I, I was in a, a session here at uh, European Utility Week where I heard uh, someone from IBM state a variation of what we call the 80-20 rule. And this variation was regarding data analytics. Um, this uh, individual said that 70% of all the analytics that are uh, applications that are deployed in utilities are descriptive. 30%, only 30% are really predictive or prescriptive. And of that 30%, on the flip side, that accounts for about 70% of the value that utilities are getting for their investments. Now, from your experiences, would you agree with that uh, rule of thumb, or would you dispute it? No, absolutely. I would. I would agree. Uh, this is how it looks today, and um, this is when we are then combining these data sets, where we are then actually increasing the, the value of that, that kind of data what we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that uh, that concept that you mentioned is particularly true today with what I mentioned up front there being 10 times or 100 times the amount of data, you have to figure out what 10, 20% is actually valuable, can help you change the way you run your business. 
Uh, and that's a difficult thing to do without software. The human mind can't simply process the hundreds of millions of data points out there. Not without a lot of caffeine, in my <laughs> case, that's for sure. Anyway, um, let's, let's move on then to uh, talking a little bit about uh, sources of inspiration for where um, analytics can really um, be optimizing utility operations. Uh, many asset intensive businesses, which a utility is certainly one of those, share a lot of common characteristics. Um, but while utilities will always have investment in big iron and small iron, uh, they may have to look beyond those types of industries into other sectors to understand how they might be able to leverage data in, in other useful ways. Um, some of those uh, sectors might be uh, you know, different service types of industries. Uh, where do you yourself see synergies? Where do you uh, get some inspiration for how you may think differently about information and how you can uh, manipulate data? Well, we think there's a couple of industries that are, are um, have, see, have been through this big data uh, transformation probably five to ten years in advance of utilities. This would be the fast mover consumer goods, retail industry, banking and finance, um, particularly through the, the sheer volume of customers they have, right? So that a bank or a retail company might have millions and millions of customers and each one of those has multiple data points for each one and that information and how they dissect that information and make decisions on their business results in them being more competitive, um, higher profits, and so forth. The other example in, in, in industries closer to utilities would be the, the automotive industry, right? Where um, through robotics and the use of the big data um, uh, around robotics, they've created a higher quality vehicle at lower costs and be able to make it consistently around the world. Peter, from your perspective um, at a utility, um, what, what, where do you draw inspiration? Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, definitely from, from the commun uh, consumer market uh, perspective in here, we are, of course, selling energy to the customers. We want to sell energy services to our customers. And, of course, in that kind of way, uh, looking on how we can yeah, get more tailored information about the customer, which can be giving much more better advice to the customer in, in the next step, not only for understanding perhaps uh, the energy consumption, but also how can I reduce my energy consumption uh, and that, that requires then that you actually have a little bit more information about the customer. And when you have that, then you can also tailor your, your um, yeah, offers to the customer. And this is what, what we see across uh, all retail businesses happening extensively. Uh, and, um, and that is where we also get a lot of inspiration for, for our activities. So. Well, and that all of that, what you both described, uh, in some ways you talked a lot about the edge of the grid, you know, the interaction, the point, meeting point with consumption, with, with consumers. And um, I get the sense because of the, you're talking about the volume of numbers, that you're talking more about residential consumers than in the past, you know, the utilities knew a little bit more about their commercial and industrial consumers. How about in terms of more of what's, what's um, beneath, um, you know, the uh, surface here in terms of internal utility operations. Are there other industry sectors that you're looking at to say, hey, they're doing something very interesting there that maybe we can apply to uh, our efforts and optimize our operations? Yeah, I think it's um, what we see from uh, um, heavy uh, capital industries uh, is also uh, from uh, um, maybe the oil industry is also how they use data in, a, in another way, a very heavy capital industry uh, to, um, in that way, look on the asset, how do you optimize your asset uh, uh, and investments, um, where to invest um, based on much more fact-based decisions rather than what it has in, been in the uh, past, uh -huh. more uh, maybe feeling but also input from, from humans. but. This is, of course, what we, something we want to use uh, as well. But now adding up, uh, adding this up with a lot more uh, fact-based uh, um, information that we get either from the sensors out in the field uh, or also more soft uh, information like reports from from maintenance reports, etc. Daryl, do yeah, we, you we, have some? I, we some do concerns? see some similarities and in, in learnings from other asset-intensive industries um, that we think can apply to utilities market. And one example I'll give you is the, uh, the mining and natural resource industry. Uh, the reason we think it's very similar is the mining industry, ha you have to be operating a mine, pulling gold or other metals out of the ground, iron ore, 
um, and moving it to your customer if you're going to be actually making any money. It's very similar to the utility industry has to be producing electricity, transmitting the, the, the electrons eventually to end customer to make money. If your equipment's down or your network's down, all of a sudden you're not producing anything for the end customer. And besides customer satisfaction dropping, you're not making any money. You're not making any revenue and obviously your cost structure is still there. So we see the mining industry thinking about asset um, utilization, asset efficiency, the health of, health of their assets, and using big data and modern software and, and hardware to maximize the amount of time that they're up in production, right? Producing and making money and keeping their customers happy. We think a lot of those uh, parallels make sense for the utility industry, um, just with different equipment, uh, different customers, but same concept. Excellent. Well, we want to talk a little bit in the time we have remaining about uh, projects and ongoing activity at Eon. And so, Pete, Peter, if you could briefly describe how you're deploying analytics and what the results have been to date, I think that would be great. And then, of course, my follow-on questions would be lessons that you've learned, as well as what would you do differently if you had a chance to do it all over again? Yeah, we have uh, actually driven one joint pro um, project together in here, which we call Smart Grid Control Center. Uh, and that project is really about to making the power system operations to become proactive. Uh, and to be able to look into the future, the next hour and the next 24 hours, mm -hmm. to understand where do you have the constraints in the network, uh, and how can uh, mitigate these constraints in the next step, so engaging with customers, getting flexibility in from them, demand uh, the demand flexibility, or also the generation flexibility which is in the network. And of course this requires a lot of data coming in, you need to be able to uh, forecast in here. So it's uh, uh, really interesting and um, this is a project which we have been running for a couple of years now and uh, it has been a proof of concept uh, uh, phase in here and uh, we're very happy with the results. Well that's great to hear. Um, and, and so are you really seeing quantifiable results uh, uh, as a result of uh, the, the, uh, the activity that's ongoing? And would you do anything differently if you could start it all over again? Would you do some, anything differently in terms of how you organize the project or run it? I think uh, in terms of quantified results, we, we definitely see possibilities how we can optimize our operations, uh, reduce grid losses in there. We can uh, settle our transformers in a, in a right position. So you optimize power flows in the network in this kind of sense. Uh, you can also optimize what we call subscriptions towards neighboring uh, network operators in here, which is also important in here. So what we see is actually by this is that the uh, distribution business is becoming more and more financially driven from these kind of operational perspectives as well. And therefore also the forecasting becomes important from that side, not only from, from the um, yeah, grid bottlenecks, etc., which is happening as well. If we would have done something different, uh, yeah, we have learned a lot. Uh, so, in terms of experiences, I would, uh, I would like, would like to make these learnings because now we know more when we want to develop this concept further. Uh, and uh, maybe some, some of the decisions we would have been making a little bit differently, in terms of design of the system and so on. Uh, but these are the things which we want, wanted to learn as well. So, I think. Um, um, and now, with this kind of experiences, it is having the, uh, this in mind, you are able to uh, do something much more better for, for the future as well. So, I would not like to be with, uh, without these experiences. Well, that's a ringing endorsement for the, the whole pilot, because uh, of course that is a lot of work and a lot of risk. Uh, Daryl, uh, do you have anything to add in terms of be, as being part of this project? Are there any lessons that you've learned? Anything that you as a vendor would do differently? Well, I think that the utility industry has typically been a conservative industry in terms of adopting technologies and changing. And if I were to do something differently, I would have, uh, I would encourage operators. You know, Eon is a, is a, is on the leading edge, right? I would encourage the followers to Eon to get started with these programs because they're seeing results. The results that Eon has can be applied to, to any any number of global um, utility utility players, as well as other big data solutions that help them do the kinds of things that Eon is doing. Great. Well, thank you so much, Daryl, and thank you, Peter. It was a pleasure chatting with you, and I've learned a, a lot about what's going on with utilities and big data. Great, Thanks thank again. You.